space is big. It's taken mankind generations to understand even the basics of how the universe works. We've got 25 minutes to tell you about rockets, spacemen, planets, satellites, stars, orbits, gravity, liftoff, docking, moonwalking, and going to the toilet? Go for orbit. On July the 20th, 1969, at 10.56 Eastern Daylight Time, that's about um, 3 o'clock in the morning in London, an American with size 11 boots made the first human footprint on another planet, and I saw him do it. I was woken up in the middle of the night to watch it on live TV. Everything about it was new and exciting, but man's dream of walking on the moon goes back a long, long way. Of course, no one thought Chiswick would be in anyone's space race, but it made quite an impact here. Well, it was over there, actually. September 1944 it was, and Hitler's first V2 rocket exploded here in Chiswick. Now, the German that invented that rocket was called Werner von Braun. And what did he do after the war? He flew across the Atlantic and helped the Americans build their moon rockets. It's a funny old world, isn't it? If you want real history, you'll have to go back to the ancient Greeks. They wanted to send a man to the moon in a galleon. Now that's stupid. I can't remember if it was David Essex or Konstantin Tsiolkovsky who first worked out mathematically that you could fly a rocket ship to the moon. Anyway, that was at the end of the 1800s. A few years later in America, there was a guy called Robert Goddard who was playing around with rockets. Now he managed an eight second flight, which the press laughed at. So he continued his work in secret. Now, before the word astronaut had even been said, the Russians were streaking ahead in the space race. In 1957, they launched the first satellite into space, that was called Sputnik, and that weighed just a little bit more than, say, someone like Philip Schofield. Then, they launched the first man into space, Yuri Gagarin, in 1961, and I'll tell you what, he really did go where no man had ever gone before. Oh, but the Americans, oh, they weren't half cheesed off. The Earth is one of nine planetary systems orbiting a fairly ordinary star that we call the Sun, or to give its Latin name, Sol. As the Earth is the third planet from the Sun, it has the title Sol 3. Mercury is Sol 1, Venus is Sol 2, Mars is Sol 4, and so on. Our Sun can be found on a spiral arm about 30,000 light-years from the center of a galaxy called the Milky Way. So if you want to give your complete address to any visiting aliens, tell them to turn left at the Andromeda galaxy. Keep going for 2.2 million light-years until they reach the Milky Way. The Earth is 93 million miles away from a star called Sun. And remember, please use the postcode. In 1991, Britain's first astronaut flew. Her name is Helen Sharman. She flew to the Russian space station Mir. But how on earth did a scientist from Surrey become Britain's first astronaut? I heard about this chance to be an astronaut on my way home from work. I was driving home, um, sitting in my car and listening to the radio. And there was not much interesting on on the radio, so I was flicking through the radio stations, just trying to see what else was on on another station. And something caught my attention. I heard an advert. Astronaut wanted. 
no experience necessary. Wow. And this then went on to explain, this was my opportunity to go and train in Russia, to blast off on a rocket, to do experiments in space. And when I got home from work, I applied. When I was younger, I used to have uh, pictures of the moon missions and of the astronauts themselves on my wall. How about you? Um, I remember going out into the garden with my dad, looking at the moon and him pointing to that and saying, look, there are people walking on the moon. They're really there right now. And of course, I couldn't see them, but uh, we could imagine what was going on. What about the early space pioneers, the first Americans and Russians to fly? I mean, if it was for them, would you have done what you'd done? No, the, the, the early pioneers are very, very important to me. I have a picture of Gagarin on my wall, and I often quite strangely think about him um, and about perhaps the thoughts that he did. He was the first person in space. He was incredibly brave. He didn't know what it was going to be like. At least I had the advice of other people who had already been there. Hello. Where were we? Oh, yeah, the early 60s. The Americans and the Russians weren't exactly the best of friends. John Lennon and Paul McCartney were just finishing school dinners, and in space terms, the Russians had done everything, except send a man to the moon, and the Americans definitely couldn't have that. So, in May 1961, the American president, John F. Kennedy, said, we choose to go to the moon and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Hard. <laughs> yeah, they were hard. That's the understatement of the decade. But the Americans kept building bigger and better rockets. Meanwhile, back in the USSR, the Russians were still achieving all the space firsts. The first woman in space, the first TV pictures sent back from space, and the first man to walk in space. I mean, in football in terms, they were 6-0 up. Then, in 1967, disaster struck. The Americans had a fire with Apollo 1, and in Russia, a Soyuz capsule crash-landed. Now, it was a sad time. It took about a year or so before anyone started thinking of going to the moon again. And then the Americans started to edge ahead. Apollo 7, 8 and 9 all got closer to the goal of reaching the moon. Apollo 10 got to within nine miles of the moon's surface. Here's what saved the three astronauts inside Apollo 10 from frying up. This heat shield is coated in Teflon, which was so good at its job that it's now used in non-stick frying pans. And this is the actual spaceship they travelled in. Now, it does look a little worse for wear, but that's not surprising when you think that it re-entered the Earth's atmosphere at 25,000 miles per hour. Now, at that speed, you get from London to Edinburgh in around a minute. This is the Science Museum in London, where you can go and see the Apollo 10 command module for yourself. The three astronauts inside, Tom Stafford, John Young and Eugene Cernan, travelled to within nine and a half miles of the moon, but weren't allowed to land. Can you imagine how frustrated they felt? 